Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to start off with our weekly videos. And in our first weekly video, we're going to talk about the concept of childhood in uh, relation to the essential question that is, what are some of the challenges and trends of growing up? And as an outline to our lesson for today, we're going to start off with an introduction and then we're going to move on to the goals of our lesson, to the key concepts and related concepts that we have in regard to the global context. And then we're going to move on to the SOI, which is the statement of inquiry. And then lastly, we're going to talk about writing a summary because it's going to be aligned with basically our essential question and the topic that we're dealing with, which is childhood. And as you can see here, a lot of questions are going to be embedded in our context, which is childhood, and our main essential question that we're dealing with in our lesson. And um, before we start off with the lesson, we're going to ask uh, ourselves a lot of questions that are, what is a nonfiction narrative? What past experiences or challenges can you name that impacted your present character today? And how are your past experiences connected to your present mindset? And lastly, to what extent can a negative learning experience become a learning vehicle? Now, whenever we think about the essential question, we'll be thinking about two different sides. There are the positive sides and the negative sides, the triumphs and the challenges. Now, whenever we think about the word challenge, we'll be thinking about teenagers and their struggle to establish a sense of identity. We'll think again about the increasing academic demands on, on them that can cause stress and anxiety. We'll think about the challenges in making up friends and navigating uh, relationships due to the shift in dynamics. However, if we think a little bit about the positive sides, we're going to think about basically the term individualism and how it helps them to develop a better understanding of themselves, their interests and their strengths, leading them despite challenges to basically form meaningful friendship and uh, basically social bonds. And starting off with the first key concept. In the first key concept, we're going to talk about the word connection. And connection in the context of childhood refers actually to the relationship and bonds that children form with others, including family, peers, teachers, and anybody. Moving on to setting. Now, setting in the context of childhood refers to the physical, social, and cultural environment in which a child grows and develops. The setting greatly influences a child's experiences, opportunities, and overall development. So whenever we talk about the word setting, we'll talk about social environment, educational environment, and at the same time, um, the surroundings. And as you can see here in the picture, you have someone who's denying actually to reveal his own character and identity. And character development actually in childhood involves a formation of moral and ethical values, personality traits and behavioral patterns. Childhood experiences and interactions contribute to the shaping of the child's characters. And whenever we talk about character, actually, we're going to talk about personality, values and beliefs. And lastly, we're going to talk about the social skills. And now once we're done with all the concepts, whether it be key related or global concept, we're going to mix them up together in one single statement, revealing actually the concept in the context of our lesson. Now once we're done with our main statement of inquiry, we're going to move on to the actual statement of inquiry, which is our identities may be influenced by connections we make within the context of our setting in characters we encounter. So um, as you can see here, it tackles um, you know, the idea of change. Change that is caused by connections that are related to the place and time and even the people that we meet and encounter every single day. Now moving on to the last part that we have in our week, which is writing summaries. So we're gonna link them actually to the text that we have, and at the same time, we're gonna discuss the difference between fiction and non-fictional narrative. And at the same time, we're gonna identify the main idea and use organizational structures to write an effective uh, summary. And now moving on to the last important part that we have, which is summaries. Summaries require you to refine complex information into a concise format. This practice helps you focus on the most important points and present them in a clear and easily understandable manner. Writing as somebody hones your critical thinking, communication, and help you at the end to basically navigate the overwhelming amount of information available in today's world. Lastly, mastering the art of summarization can greatly enhance your capabilities.